Hello everyone, this time of the year it's getting a bit hot even in Finland so for this video I decided to wear something a little bit more casual than before. It's been three days since we put the stopper in the wine. The yeast is now completely stopped and we can proceed. The next step in the process is to get rid of the yeast completely and also get rid of the carbon dioxide. First, we have to deal with the carbon dioxide because it efficiently prevents the wine from clearing. Usually getting rid of the carbon dioxide is done by shaking the barrel, but that's not, enough, not good enough for our purposes, so we are going to use a bit more sophisticated manner. What we are going to do next is that we divide our wine into these three 10 liter buckets. You need at least one lead and you also need the sanitizer that we stored from sanitizing the entire barrel at first. Now that we have washed all our buckets, we just administer the sanitizer to all three of them evenly. That is close enough. Then just close all the lids. These lids, they are actually not very good. I just bought them and it appears they don't fit that well. They are not very secure. But well, anyways, I have a towel underneath so it's okay if it spills a little bit. Then what we do here is we shake these buckets so that they get completely sanitized. Next one. If you have lids that don't close this bucket, you might want to use duct tape or something to do this a bit more cleaner manner, but this will do just fine. And now we have to wait five minutes for the sanitizer to take effect and then we put our sanitizer back to the bottle because we are going to need it in the end to sanitize our wine bottles. About five minutes has passed and we can put our sanitizer back into the bottle. The reason I'm showing this is that it's really crucial to save the, to remember to save the sanitizer so that you can sanitize your wine bottles. These lids we don't any we don't need anymore so you can just get rid of them. And finally, before proceeding, remember to rinse all your buckets really carefully. Buckets are now sanitized and if you want, you can also sanitize this wine tube. It's not necessary. The area of this tube is so small, it's ins insignificant. Next thing to do is to remove the water lock and the lid. I already removed it, so it's just sitting here, place it on top of a towel or something and now we have to do an operation with this wine tubing. And now let's get on with it. So this end you shall put it into the wine barrel. Just make sure that it doesn't touch the bottom because the stuff at the bottom is what we do not want. We are going to throw it away. So, next step, hold the tube secure and you will just suck from this end. Well, it's kind of difficult to explain, so I'm, I'm just gonna show you how this is done. So, here we go. The wine is falling by kind of using its own weight to the bucket. 
after this first bucket is filled, you will use this um, closing plastic thing at the end of the tube and then just switch to another bucket. We are go we're going to fill all three of these buckets evenly. The first bucket is almost full, so I'm just gonna close the end of this tube, move it to the next bucket and open it again. Close, put to next bucket and open it. The second bucket is almost full, so now we'll just switch to the third one. Close, switch and open. Gonna do one more switch. Okay, and when you see that you pretty much only have yeast left at the barrel at the bottom, you will just lift the tube up so that everything falls back to the barrel. Because at the bottom it's mostly yeast, and that's what we do not want to have, we want to get rid of it. Once you're done, just place the wine tube on top of a towel or some other cloth you have. Here you can, you can see the beautiful red wine in the buckets filled almost evenly. And here you can see the bottom of the barrel. This camera doesn't show it very well, but it's mostly yeast. Next, we want to rinse our barrel so that it's clean from all that yeast and after that we continue with carbon dioxide removal. Once again, we have a clean barrel and we can now proceed removing carbon dioxide from the wine. The most efficient method to do this is to just pour this wine from the buckets to the barrel, then back to the bucket, back to the barrel and so on, as long as it's required, so that you, you can see and hear that there's not much more carbon dioxide left. So, let's just begin the process. This is how it goes. And you can, when I pour this to the barrel, you can actually see and perhaps even hear how much it contains carbon dioxide. You, you could see how high those bubbles rise. And now we have to pour the wine back to the bucket. But we have to be really careful because bucket is so small that we don't want any boiling to happen here. And next one. Not sure if you can hear this, but there is huge amounts of carbon dioxide within the wine. If you're doing this in your bathroom, you can you don't have to care if it spills a little bit. You can you can pour the wine to the from the bucket to the barrel much faster. This is the second round, but still huge amounts of carbon dioxide in the wine. Now, another benefit of this is that when we only have one bucket full of wine in the barrel, we can close the lid, put the water lock on and shake it very efficiently. I also rinsed the lid. Always when you 
do procedures to the barrel make sure that the lid is secured because if it's not it's just gonna get messy because it's it's much lighter so it's much easier to shake it and because there there is much less wine it it kind of it's kind of much more efficient you can hear from the water lock how the carbon dioxide is escaping the wine and a bucket switch it's good to switch buckets constantly because even if you're not seeing it the carbon dioxide is escaping for quite a while after you have done these shakings I have to be really careful with this because it's dripping wine At this, at this stage I can actually smell the carbon dioxide in the air so strongly that I'm gonna have to have to open windows. So totally okay to once in a while use clean towels to clean the side of the barrel and to prevent it from getting way too messy. I've been doing this for about 45 minutes now and it, it seems the wine does not react very strongly anymore. The reaction when I pour the wine to the bucket is very mild. So I'm fairly sure that this is good enough and we can just pour all the wine back to the bucket and continue. After that carbon dioxide removal section I was so tired I forgot to switch on the recording for my last section of this video so I'm just going to tell you what I did after. Take this wine box for one last time and find a substance called wine gelatin. You mix it to the glass of hot water. Before you pour wine gelatin into the wine, you take this back of uh, super, super clearing and just pour it in, in your wine. And after you have done that, you will pour the wine gelatin mixed with hot water to the wine. Then you just stir a little bit. And after that, we just close the lid, close the water lock. Water lock is not necessarily needed anymore, but we want to have it because we just want to insulate our wine from environment. We, we don't want any insects or anything whatsoever inside our barrel. Next, we have to wait for about five days for the wine to clear and then we can proceed. And one more time, apologies not remembering to switch on recording for these final steps I just explained.